So the next question, um, I know that you've, you've written quite a bit about happiness and what cause someone to feel happy, um, what is the root of happiness. Um, I want to flip that on its head. Um, obviously, you're a med medical doctor, um, and I guess, obviously, there are reasons uh, for uh, depression, which include ch chemical imbalances. There are biological uh, factors at play, obviously. But I guess aside from that, how do you um, understand, uh, what would you argue uh, are the main uh, factors which play into causing someone to be or feel depressed? Again, a very good question Thank and you. very relevant. Of course, in our age, we have an epidemic of depression. I think it's the second largest killer in the Western world. Right. Even among people who ostensibly are successful and have, have, their, have their needs met, possibly even more among such people. I think in order to answer your question about depression, we do need to speak briefly about happiness. Because you'll see that depression is a failure of these mechanisms that build happiness. In our world, happiness is not a frivolous detachment. If you look in secular culture, I think you'll see that happiness, one way or other, is some sort of detachment. It's either alcoholic or chemical or emotional. People put themselves into a world of entertainment where they can detach from their lives. It never fails to amaze me that when people really want to detach and have a really good time, they go and watch a horror movie. Right? Uh, you know, I, I haven't been to see a movie for many, for decades. I've not been to a theater or a, a cinema for 40 years. But I see movies all the time because I travel. And as I sit on the plane, I see 15 screens around me, and I, I can't help seeing what people are watching. They're watching people molested, immolated, shredded, burned, destroyed, cities wiped out, planets exploded, and they seem to be enjoying it thoroughly. You know, I have trouble understanding a society that, that does that. But I think possibly part of the reason is it's a distraction from their own lives. Yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting. The Jewish view, Judaism is a super conscious process, not a detachment from reality. And therefore, our vision of happiness is entirely different. Our vision of happiness is not a detachment, but it is a deep engagement of the process of life. In other words, I would say this, that one of the greatest generators of happiness is when your life is progressing in a meaningful direction, when you're moving along the correct road to a correct destination, and you feel that progress, you definitely will be happy. You may be in pain. The face may be showing expressions of strain and pain, but at some of life's moment of great engagement of difficulty, and effort are some of life's most happy moments. I know this sounds a little difficult to imagine. Let me give you an example. Okay. Imagine you're a Martian, an alien. I'll try. Do you think your audience can imagine that? You've landed from another planet. You want to know what humanity is all about. You hire an earthling to take you around human experience. The first place he takes you is to a gym. You put your eye to the keyhole and you see a young fellow working on a machine. He's stretching springs, he's picking up weights, he looks terrible. Pouring with sweat, he's in early kidney failure. <laughs> you would be convinced that just out of your range of vision stands another earth being with a submachine gun forcing him into this bizarre form of torture. But when you step into the establishment, you'll find that no one's forcing him. He's paying for this experience and he's loving every moment. That pain can be so pleasurable it can be addictive. Why? Why are we built in such a way that we, when we strain against a torturous, arduous journey, we enjoy the process? The meaning of this is that when you're making progress towards a meaningful goal, against resistance particularly, and you're conquering the issues, battling the issues and making progress, you feel a tremendous expansion of joy. It's a deep question why. I'm not, that's not going to that too fully. Just to give a clue, I, I will say this. The reason you enjoy the journey and the progress against difficulty is because you anticipate destination. In every step of that journey, you feel the destination coming closer. Right? In fact, very often the anticipation of destination is better than the arriving. Mm. Very often it pays not to get there, just a big disappointment. But it's that journey that moves towards fulfillment. Not only the fulfillment pleasurable, the journey itself is pleasurable. Right? We say, our Kabbalists teach us, that the reason for this is because life is an arduous, torturous journey to an infinitely pleasurable destination that is nothing other than what the work of the journey yielded. Our concept of a world to come is a state of being in which all you enjoy is what you have become. And therefore, in every microcosmic experience of that, you work for an hour to achieve something. You work for a week on a business project. You work for a year with, intense, with intensity. You enjoy the project as you see the thing taking shape. Such a person cannot be depressed. They can be weeping in pain and agony, but you cannot. Depression means that black, hopeless, end of the road, no place to go that is never allowed in Judaism. And therefore, depression is the response to a life that is going nowhere. When the wheels are spinning and the journey is not taking place, when a day and a week and a month and a year are going by and you are no different, 
Nothing has been constructed. The soul feels the cold hand of depression. And people who've been there will tell you it's the most painful feeling imaginable. What's the cure for depression? Get moving. When some, I'm not talking about chemical, genetic, the things you refer to quite right. correctly. They may need medical intervention. I'm talking about life depression. You know, like most men feel when they're about 35. Start getting radically depressed for the rest of their lives. The, the cure for depression is get moving. Now, in Jewish psychology, we have a principle that you can't appeal to the inner being directly. You need to get the external being moving. If you walk up to somebody who's morbidly depressed and say, be happy, they will not be happy. They'll be suicidal. Mm -hmm. Take them for a run. Get them doing something with their hands. Best of all, get them doing something for somebody else. When you're productive and achieving something meaningful, you cannot be depressed. And therefore, in a very small nutshell, the answer to your question is that happiness is the experience of life progressing. Not trivial external frivolity, but the deep feeling of a life that's developing. And depression is the guaranteed consequence of a life that is going nowhere. I'll just add one interesting word. What are these two escapes from depression? What are the two escapes from a life that is not moving? One is depression, and the other is throwing one's life intensely into building something that is meaningless. People who build the world's greatest beer can collection, or modern art collection, whatever it is, as an ideal, that's enough of a drive to keep them satisfied and happy, but nothing meaningful is being constructed. That's a travesty. Depression's better than that because a depressed person may eventually discover what life's all about. But a person who spends his life idealistically building the world's greatest modern art collection, not talking about as an investment, that's fine. Somebody who's ideologically committed to collecting every beer can in the world, right? that is enough to drive the neshama, the soul, but it's a travesty because that person will never get anywhere. And that's, a, that's probably a, a greater tragedy and travesty than, than depression. Right. And, and, and do you By think... By the way, it may be a political power base, it may be muscle, it may be money. Right. But those things are enough All to drive, to satisfy the human drive for progression. And of course, that's not the purpose. The purpose is developing the spirit, family, relationships, the deeply meaningful things. That's the genuine pleasure to be had in the world. Do these, do these things, um, do this, does this mindset um, that you speak of, um, of always moving forward and get, getting going, do you think it can apply to people who also have their, have their sort of chemical imbalances, their biological issues as well? Can, can those things be overcome uh, through, through the mind? Right, a very meaningful question as well. And we'll we, have to make it quick because we only have one minute left on just this. Just to deal with depression and happiness. In <laughs> well, I would say that speaking medically, we usually find that it is necessary. Even a person who may need medication, very, very often a cognitive behavioral approach, a psychological approach, a giving of meaning, a uh, providing of an agenda that moves life forward, very often works very well synergistically with redressing the chemical balance. Right. They all go hand in hand.